Recently, I did a video all about the hype surrounding Wild Turkey's 101, but that's not the only budget-friendly American bourbon that's, well, joined the hype train of late. The other, of course, is Buffalo Trace. Hello and welcome back to the channel and yes today we're taking a look at Buffalo Trace just the regular entry level bourbon from the Buffalo Trace distillery or is that the Sazerac distillery I'll be honest I've, I've lost my memory on that one a little bit I think it's the Buffalo Trace distillery but they're owned by the Sazerac company but anyway doesn't matter right now in the US this is kind of a not a rare thing to find but it's certainly not as easily available as it once was and certainly not as easily available as it is right here in the UK. That is because for whatever reason over the last two years it's gained a bit of notoriety as being literally the best entry level cheap as you can go bourbon and well today I need to find out whether that's really the case. It has seen such an influx in popularity in fact that in some stores in the US it's being sold at significantly above MSRP or RRP or whatever you want to call it and also it's being limited to one per customer in a lot of shops in some states so yeah it's a bit it's a bit weird given that I could have probably bought I don't know what they had eight ten bottles of this at the supermarket I went to last night to flat 26 quid which is well standard really it wasn't on offer that's just the price i don't know quite how that compares to what it is in the us with the exchange rate but it's pretty similar i think and and of course this is not my first time trying this i've had several bottles of buffalo trace in the past and for whatever reason when i've gone in to pick a bourbon i've never thought about this being the best and i think that's because in years gone by I've not really understood it properly and maybe I've just been shopping with my eyes because well there is one thing that stands out and that is this if we take another cheap entry-level bourbon and we take another cheap entry-level bourbon you can see there the Buffalo Trace doesn't quite have the pizzazz at least in my mind the, you know the Woodford Reserve bottle it's got this thin super elegant almost old school medicine bottle thing and maker's mark I mean with the wax top and the kind of long neck and the square bottle it's just got something going on Buffalo Trace is well plain visually but apparently it's a damn sight better than these two right here so it's time to find out just before we do though, I should say this is a straight up 40% ABV, so watered down whiskey. It's not just an increased proof, it's definitely nowhere near cast strength. It's just regular old 40% run of the mill distilled spirit, well, distilled bourbon whiskey spirit. Um, so, yeah, it's, there's nothing really shouty about it. Before we crack it open, a closer look at that bottle. I mean, it's nice enough. It's got, you know, it feels cowboyish i guess um as is the vibe that a lot of uh bourbons go for but it's just i don't know it's just a straight up bottle not to mean anything about the quality of what's inside of course but yeah i don't know it just never really tickled my pickle glen cairn glass at the ready then let's get this open uh, it's one of those very fiddly kind of uh there we go it's sheared off, obviously. These things never work for me. Let me try and tear our way in. I must say, actually, I don't remember the bottle cap being quite that, well, detailed. Maybe you can, how close I can come where you can still see it, but yeah, it's got a nice, nice little bottle cap on there. I don't remember that from my previous bottles. And good noise, it's always a good sign. It means literally nothing, but I enjoy it. So, a very small dram poured in. We can always top it up, but we won't want to waste any. In the glass, it's pretty much as generic bourbon in colour as you're going to get. A slightly darkened caramel is basically all it's at. There's no nothing stand out, nothing obscure, nothing unusual there. It's just, yeah, exactly what you would imagine. However. As I said, 
the hype train is on the way, especially in the US, so let's find out. Have I been ignoring this like a fool? It's surprisingly ethanol forward for a 40 percenter. It's got quite a lot of what I often refer to as kind of like clean antiseptic notes. Um, I'm pretty sure that's something you get quite a lot of in the Woodford. So it might be interesting to compare the aromas on those these two bottles shortly. Um, beyond that though, oaky, sweet, a bit of licorice perhaps. Oh, there is a note in there that's starting to emerge and it's almost a bit of sweet cherry lingering in the background. Um, I think that's pretty much everything I'm going to get at this point anyway. We'll come back to it once it's opened up a bit, but let's give it a sip, shall we? Cheers. That is actually wildly smooth. Now, one thing, I don't know if it's going to pick up. Can you see the legs on that? It really has stuck to the glass, um, which is always a nice surprise, 40% uh, uh, ABV, and it's really soft pillowy almost a bit of toasted marshmallow lingering in the back there it's got your usual kind of i guess kind of mid toasted oak and um, caramel notes that you get in not going to say all but most bourbons but this one it almost feels watered down which at 40 percent it is but more so than others at 40 percent however this does have me quite excited. Now, I have already got a bottle of Eagle Rare, which is made by them, but it's not the same mash bill. One thing I do have though, is a bottle of Stag. And allegedly the mash bill is kind of the same between this really, really basic entry or flow trace and the Stag version. So yeah, I'm not sure. Well, let's put it this way. If this at 40% is very well balanced and considered but maybe a bit watery it's very very big brother at 65.5 percent whenever the time comes that i open that's not me anytime soon should be a miraculous experience now it probably sounds like i've been a bit mean about this so far or a little bit disinterested in it but the truth is it's almost too easy to drink it's it's balanced it's considered it's got Loads of nice little kind of tips to the hat to lots of different flavour points. There's a little bit of pepper in there. There's a little bit of that kind of antiseptic thing, which I think I said when I uh, reviewed or looked at Woodford, this is typically a scotch note um, in my experience, but maybe, maybe I've just been drinking too much scotch and not enough bourbon and I've not really noticed it. But, you know, it's got those slightly more challenging complex notes and then just an absolute sea of sweeter, approachable, kind of, I guess, wooden and sweeter notes that just, yeah, really, really round it out. I can see why it's popular, but I'm a bit confused maybe as to why it's so popular with, well, the whiskey geeks of the world, if I'm honest. It's um, a perfectly pleasant, easily drinkable dram. And I think to validate this, we need to pitch it up against a couple of others. So what I'm thinking is the Woodford, because as I said, that kind of medicinal quality that they both seem to share, I think will make for an interesting comparison. But also when I think of easy drinking, I actually think of Bullet. Now, I think these are the same two that I um, kind of pitched head to head against Wild Turkey 101 as kind of a benchmark and a few people in the comments said why did you use those they're not very good maybe not but you gotta remember in the UK our kind of easily available cheaper options aren't that vast and some of your cheaper options in the US actually end up being a premium here so you kind of don't bother with them so this is what we're going for I could pitch it against Wild Turkey 101 but it is a level up, it's, it's significantly stronger, It's I don't think it's fair, and from what I remember of that, well, I just won't be able to taste that afterwards. So, let's give these a try. So, I'm gonna go with the Woodford first. Excellent noise, as always. Just a tiny, tiny sample, try and see what we can get out of it, and if there's any noticeable difference. Yeah, definitely that same 
So clean, think, you know, antibacterial TCP, antiseptic note. It's a bit more prominent, a bit spikier on the Woodford, which to be honest, is probably in Buffalo Trace's flavor. It's not necessarily a note that you want heaps and heaps of. The Buffalo Trace overall is a lot smoother, feels a lot more rounded off again, so kind of in its favor. The Woodford packs more of a punch. It's maybe a little bit oakier, a little bit more fiery, definitely more um, more booze forward anyway. I mean, it's 43.2, so it is stronger, but not really by a great deal. And then let's give the, uh, the Bullet a try. I know a lot of people really, really don't rate this at all. For me, I think it's that rye content. It's a bit higher rye than a lot of kind of other entry level American bourbons that you certainly that you can get in the UK anyway. And for me, that just gives it a little extra something, a little bit of extra complexity that I do quite enjoy. And again, the aroma on the bullet is quite a bit more pokey than it is on the Buffalo Trace. This time it's more peppery, thanks to that rye quality. It's a little bit more almost zesty in some way. Um, yeah, and that rye value at the end just brings in a load of kind of not only just pepper, but also other spice notes, green, almost grassy notes that you just don't get anywhere in this Buffalo Trace. However, this Buffalo Trace is just so considered It's sweet, it's approachable, it's not going to knock your socks off, but it is just very enjoyable to drink, if that makes sense. A lot of non-bourbon or non-whiskey fans could probably sip on that quite happily because it is a little bit reserved, it is a little bit drawn back, but at the same time, whilst I do actually really quite enjoy these two for what they are, you know, the lower end of the spectrum. I can see myself from time to time going, I want the easiest and maybe most kind of direct bourbon hit, but at 40%, at a cheap price point. And I think this just gets it. The Wild Turkey 101 I described as being like, you know, all of the flavors you'd want in bourbon throughout the drink if that makes sense because it started at one place and then went somewhere else and it was a, it was a bit of a journey because it was that just that stronger abv just helps it kind of express its complexities if you like this isn't especially expressive in the same way expressive 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 but it has that similar all-encompassing thing it's really sweet it's really oaky it's a it's a tiny bit peppery. It's got the, as I say, that kind of slightly antiseptic thing from the Woodford, but it's just a really, really easy sipper. And I think, to be honest, that's all I've got to say about it. I'm not going to go as far as to say I understand the hype. I think it's a very good bottle. And now I've sat and thought about it, I probably was just dismissing its easy drinkingness for being simple. I don't think it is as simple as I kind of initially believed. However, if you're in the UK and you can get it easily like I can and it's not going to break the bank, which it doesn't, yeah, go grab a bottle to add to your collection because, well, if it starts off over here, it'll get rare like it is over there and that would probably be a shame. And that is all I've got to say about it. So as always, thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like it. If you haven't already subscribed, if you'll be so kind and I'll catch you next time. Cheers.